what's going on everybody welcome back to another video here on the channel and today we're going to be talking about the warlords ruin dungeon and i kind of wanted to do a video on the dark age itself or just touch on some points that might be relevant in the upcoming dungeon as somebody who's been playing the game for years at this point, I mean, I've been paying attention to the story here and there, and I've come to notice one thing. It's that, generally, the Dark Age is only talked about in mentions, and throughout the game, we never really get to see that part of history. I mean, we hear things like Shax is a warlord, Felwinter was a warlord, and back during the Dark Age, when they were rivals, Shax eventually decapitated Felwinter, all in one shot, might I add. Like, he literally backfisted him and killed him. But then we hear about all these other battles that I would really like to see and maybe even dive into things like the warlords conflict and even some of the petty skirmishes that happened during the dark age between the warlords themselves so without further ado let's get started and let me know if you guys want more videos like this i usually don't make too long of videos but some of you guys like it when i make longer videos i guess so just let me know how it goes so for those who are unaware the dark age was a time period for humanity that was heralded by the collapse this time period for humanity was very infamous due to a couple of things one of them was the fact that the traveler wasn't really responsive so i could imagine that a lot of people thought that the traveler was dead another reason is the warlords now the warlords have been referenced through the story of destiny for a while now i believe ever since destiny one and we got a lot of talk about them from the rise of iron campaign because it was around this time that the iron lords would also take their rise as well now some of you who are keeping up with my short series where i go over the history of destiny very briefly will know that for the past couple of days i've been talking about the warlords simply because of the new dungeon and it kind of got me hype anyways those who are keeping up with the series will know this all too well, but the warlords themselves, at least the ones that controlled territory and would involve themselves in petty skirmishes, were very tyrannical, as you can imagine. As the saying goes, absolute power corrupts absolutely, and this was definitely the case here, or at least for most of them. There were some good warlords, people like Shax were an example of one. He would protect the people that he was watching over, but he would do so with methods that he now regrets, which is something that we could see reference to with this new dungeon. I can imagine that some of the audio logs or some of the lore that we might find in the collectibles might go further into detail about these methods or we could even get the answer to the questions that we've been having about Shax for a while now like for example I know that there's a lot of questions about who Shax really is I know there's this like kind of meme or joke going around that Shax is actually William Shakespeare and I think it's funny to be honest with you but what if that was actually the case because apparently Shax has made reference to his love of Shakespeare's work so it's likely that he's just a fan of Shakespeare like a lot of people are but I mean if he's just saying that he likes his own work that would be kind of crazy anyways shack's tangent over it dealt with and now back to the main stuff like I was saying before, the warlords were very tyrannical and they often didn't show much mercy, especially to the people that they were supposed to be quote unquote protecting. As many citizens of other kingdoms in the past would often be made to do, they would have to pay taxes to these warlords for their protection of sorts. And if they didn't pay up, then dire consequences would follow suit. And if you're somewhat of a history buff, then you know the consequences for not paying taxes in things like ancient Rome or Greece or other worlds of the past and how dire they could be and how torturous and laborious they could be but just imagine that but the person who's doing this to you has the light like could you imagine <laughs> just getting a nova bomb sent straight to you and your family just generations gone off the map just like that. And I feel like this was a big reason as to why the Iron Lords had to take a stand and actually band it together. It's probably part of the reason why other warlords like Shax or Felwinter even joined up with their ranks or stepped down from their mantle as warlord and moved their people into the city during the city age. And it was probably because of two reasons. One of them was because of what I just explained and the fact that other warlords would see the torture and just suffering of the people at the hands of these people who were abusing their powers. And another thing is, is that this lifestyle probably wasn't really sustainable for long especially with the warlords not being as united as the iron lords there was often a lot of infighting as i said before there was petty skirmishes between multiple warlords for things like land and more importantly food and resources and so at some point you know something's got to give right i mean there's only so much land that you can want to take for yourself all the while another warlord is encroaching upon your territory that you're not exactly protecting at the moment because you're off conquering other lands and if you're not all that strong you'll just lose your territory and be swiftly executed, ghost included. One might even compare this time in history for Destiny to another time in history in our reality, to the warlord era of China back in 1916. There was a power vacuum that was created after the death of the monarchist leader at the time, and so different areas of China would 
constantly switch hands for power, and they weren't really the nicest to the people that they quote unquote protected, much like the warlords. And I guess you could say this kind of ties back into the first point that I made as to why the Iron Lords kind of had to step in, seeing as though there wasn't really many people to go around and try to protect. I mean, we're talking about a time after millions of people died, either out in space or here on Earth. The darkness killed a lot of people during the collapse. We know as much because of the different ruins that we see of civilizations that existed back in the Golden Age and even before then. Places like Old Chicago or places like London. London seldom mentioned in the lore, but it was destroyed by the House of Devils during this time in the Dark Age. These are all things, except for the whole part about China, that I think could be referenced in the dungeon and definitely hold some relevance to the storyline. We might even hear reference from Saladin himself about the Warlords' conflict, which were a series of battles that took place between the Iron Lords and the Warlords. I would imagine that the Iron Lords would have an easier time besting a lot of these solo Warlords, as like I said previously, the Warlords weren't really united under any house, so taking them out quick enough so that others couldn't prepare would probably be the biggest challenge. And I could imagine as the Iron Lords would liberate the people from these tyrannical warlords, word would spread about the Iron Lords pretty quickly. But yeah, that's pretty much all of the points that I really wanted to cover in reference to the dungeon that's coming up. And of course, I'll make more videos on the lore of the armor and what we can find out from that. And I know a lot of people might think that Siva might be coming back or Siva might be in this dungeon, but I really don't think so. Due in part to how Bungie kind of views Siva. So, I mean, we'll just have to see. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Peace.